<laughs> I remember 2019, I was, I was, um, I was here, not like hair, Kingwood was where we used, and I came up and all I could say was wow, because um, right from day one, the love has been amazing. Um, Daddy, thank you so much. God blessed. Daddy, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm amazed. <laughs> you know, I, um, the only the only memories I have of Bianole was when I was like putting on this normal shirts we used to wear as kids, then playing on sand. <laughs> See, I'm that young. <laughs> I'm that young. So. And now, that song I was listening to, the person we're all looking up to is here. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, you see, Temple Nation has been amazing. You know, we're meeting for the first time today and he, he has been, it was a real encouragement all through this event. He was, uh, it was God's provision. Thank you very much, sir. So um, this, this session is really special to me. I think this... Oh, so um, <laughs> this, this session is like the core of this event for me. Because beyond the sound, beyond the music, I, I really want to make a change. That, that's why we're here. Beyond all these, the, the fancy vocals you hear and all that stuff. No, there's an intent. There's a reason this is Aspire concert. And there is a reason we're gathered like this. There's a reason during a concert we're having this session. You know, I, I know, I know Mr. Samsung must have been amazed when I reached out to him and I told him, sir, I want you to come for my event and talk. <laughs> sir, did you, did you feel for a moment I was a scam? Wanting you to come and talk. <laughs> well, it, it, it's... Um, well, I... Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Um, it's your, the request wasn't an unusual one. Um, when you called and said you wanted me to just come and talk, I knew <coughs> that uh, even though I know that singing is my core, um, I'm also a student of the word, so I can still talk. So it wasn't. I, I didn't think it was a scam. I just Hallelujah. <laughs> can Hallelujah. we celebrate it? Awesome. So, so I'll share a bit and um, I'll ask a few questions so they can also share. Because I believe um, how I have grown over time is um, through co conversations, continuous conversations, not just coming for a meeting that I'm spoken to once, is that I am, I am in a circle of persons where I communicate certain things and where certain things are communicated to me. And over time, that information we share helps me grow. So I want to bring that here and to the persons we have here. That's the essence of this plenary session. So 2019, the first event study, um, it seemed really impossible. So I, 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 we spent over 800,000 as a young man myself, jobless as at then. We spent over 800,000. At no point was my account up to 100,000. Over 800,000 spent for the event. At no point was my account up to 100,000. Yet, everything was paid for in full. And the next year, same thing. We did, um, it was COVID last year. Yet, we opened the salon. We did an event successfully, and it was COVID. I'm going somewhere. And now we're here. You know, I remember, can we celebrate my mom? Can we celebrate my mom? Mrs. Aviri, please show your face. That's my mom. Please, can we rise and celebrate her? Okay, thank you. Please have a seat. So um, I, I was thinking, Let's have an, last year I told mom, we're going to have an event in December. She was like, this is COVID. You know the way things are. Don't you think you should calm down? I said, no, mom, we'll push you this thing. That's, that's our talk. 
This year, the same thing. She said, ah, don't you think? You know, it's, it's amazing how she always says, don't you think? She does not say, I think you should calm down. She said, don't you think? You know, she always, she always leaves the decision there for me to make. And once I say, yes, I'm going for it, she's always behind me. So I'm saying all this to say that it's possible. Whatever it is, whatever it is, um, whatever your thoughts are, whatever your dreams are, whatever your ambitions might be, it is possible. You know, I, I, um, we started Dennis Phone Music with um, a saxophone and a gifted guitar that belonged to Perpetual. Well, in, in, in less than two years, we had a studio. We had a place we could call our studio with absolutely nothing. I wasn't earning nothing, and we got to that extent. And now we're here. You know, I was sharing something with you um, back in the hotel, how that people are thinking stuff because we're doing this. But long and short, what I'm trying to say is that we can trust God. We can trust God and we can do it. Are we together? Are we together? The reason I brought everybody here today is to tell you that we can trust God and we can do it. You know, <laughs> celebrate my brother, Oyome. <laughs> He's been a friend. He's been really amazing. I remember having a conversation with him and where... So the budget for this was over a millionaire. So we're looking at the things we could do and the things we couldn't do. And we're looking at our accounts, how that was less than 20,000 there. <laughs> and and said, the reason we're doing all this is that when we get here, I would stand and say, we trusted God. Everything. Start to finish. We trusted God. You know, one day I, I hope to be in daddy's shoes. I hope to be in your shoes, sir. And when I get there, I want to look at the persons behind me and say, the way we got here was that we, we only did one thing. We trusted God. Practically, there were some steps we took. But in the reality, all we did was trust God. You know, people would say, people would say, um, Let's, let's face reality. Let's, well, my reality is that the only explanation to how all this can be real is that I trusted God. I, the, so I, 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 was, I was talking to daddy the other day and I was telling him that this year I contemplated Danny's phone music. What we started, um, I think, early 2019. So I, I was thinking that I should sell all the equipment. So you know, sir, because of money, I booked your flight earlier way way earlier because i wanted it to be cheaper so after like two months i was thinking do i just call him and say sir please um we may reach out to you again the flight i don't know what's going to happen to it but i was thinking about selling all our stuffs what we had in the studio i, I was thinking about because spending a millionaire for an event and the next week you're having just twenty thousand there I'm, I'm thinking is it really worth it but then i i remembered that daddy here last year December after the concert we did we we're walking to his car and he said he held me and said um, said mega do you know what he said believe in what you're doing I said yes sir he repeated it he said mega believe in what you're doing he said do you know why he said because I believed in it is that because I believe in it? And, and that, that was it for me. That's why we're here. That's why we didn't sell anything. <laughs> that's, that's why this is possible. So first question, sir, to you, Samsung, is what do you think um, we should pay attention to when it comes to the role people play in our journey? I don't know if the question is clear enough. Because personally, I believe... I believe um, how you get from here to there is a matter of persons. So what do you think? What's the approach? How have you done yours in your own journey? How have people played their parts? How have you undoed these people? And how have you gotten these people? How have you undoed them? How have you retained them over time? And praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. 
You know, before I answer the question, um, there's something that happens in church, man of God, most of the time. When we say, when we come on stage and say, praise the Lord, or hallelujah, you think we're trying to call for your attention. I'm not trying to call for your attention. I actually mean, praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Um, okay, to, in answering that question, I would like to say that um, people have played a major role in my journey as a gospel music artist. Um, but one thing that I have learned over the period of time through the teachings of our man of God is that you must listen to your spirit. People are talking, people will talk, people will advise you. You know, I, I learned something from, um, there's the, the, the story about um, Abraham when God called him to sacrifice Isaac. I was wondering, the Bible didn't state anywhere where Abraham had to contemplate it with his friends. Are you listening to me? You see, if, if God had told me now, Samsung, I have three boys. If God had said, I want you to sacrifice your first son, what will happen, the natural way a man will respond is, ah, my first son. And then you're thinking, the next thing I want to do is, to discuss with my wife. If you are here, would you? How would you handle yeah, that? Yeah. I want to discuss about that. See what? See what God is telling me to sacrifice our son. Or I want to call my father and say, ah, "Daddy, <laughs> I just heard a voice." But Abraham did not. He trusted God all the way. And the Bible mentioned that as as Abraham was going on the journey, God was giving him instructions per day. So the way I've been able to handle people and the things they had to say in my, in my journey is I listen more to the inward man. The Bible says the spirit, of a, the spirit of a man is the candlelight of God. It is your spirit that God will use to guide you, not the words that men say. Men, people would advise you based on their limited knowledge. But the Spirit of God knows where you are going to. So what I'm trying to say is that over the period of time, I had listened to people. I've, been, I've made some mistakes in my journey. But every time I had to listen to the Spirit of God lead me or guide me, it has, guide, it has led me to the right spot. And that's how far I've gotten to where I am today. Being led, being listening more to the inward man. Because that's the candlelight. That God has used to guide me, even in places where I cannot, I cannot make a decision. In the place of dilemma, I'm not sure where to go. I'm not sure what to do. You know, I just listen to the Spirit, and He tells me exactly what to do. Once I follow it, I get to the way. I get to, I, I get to the right place, and it has been like that all my years. So, listening to people is not a bad thing, but you must consult with the Spirit of God in your mind, in your heart. That's very important. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. So, Minister Temple Nation, um, for the musicians here, um, we are very unique persons. I myself, for one, I'm unique. I am trying to carve a niche for myself. I'm doing my own thing. So, in your journey, how have you um, sustained yourself? I, I, I believe your music is different. What you do is different. So, how have you thrived doing what you're doing? How are you doing it? First of all, Hallelujah. First, I want to say thank you to Papa. I didn't know he was the pastor of the church. And we didn't even know. We're looking for you. Thank you so much. I'm going to learn some You see, it's good to start over here. Thank you, my boss. Thank you, sir. You don't know what privilege I'm enjoying. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, Temple Nation is very different. I am very, very different because I am raised different. You know, one thing I'm grateful to God is that my mom, the way your mother can only go drop the sign up and say, God, I don't get money. See the game and put it in the altar. That's what happens to me. I just find that everywhere I am always in church. And another thing that helped me is I exposed myself to training. The training I received, trust me, is not funny at all. You will quit, you will want to quit, you will want to give up because you're doing the right thing and you're not saying you're not getting thank you. You're not doing something wrong, but you're doing the right thing. And they are still shouting on you on top, scolding you on top. You're not even the only person around. 
you're getting the, the highest of the lashes. But I did the right thing. You know, that's the kind of process I went through. My mom, oh Jesus. If my mom can't do you, you will know that Jesus is glory. You know, there's one guy mistakenly helped myself and extended my hand into the bottle of soup. That day, my mom arranged seven kings. Each one was explaining Bible scripture. <laughs> You know, my mom wants to do it, she would lock me in the door inside the house, and after that, she put pepper in my eyes, literally, and locked me inside the room for hours. I was crying. You know, when you cry, and there's no more tears. And after that, she beat me and start opening Bible verses for me. And so, the way I was raised is different. So, according to this training that I have received, it made me do the things I'm doing naturally by default. Hallelujah. So for you, as a music minister, or you want to do what we are doing, or you want to be like us, hey, see my boss that is here, if you tell you the storms and the things that are getting, but it's still standing. So training is the everything I can say. Me, training has been everything for me. Everything. I've lived with like four pastors. I've slept in Baltimore for two years. On top of water like this, mosquito is by his in the night, there's no reward to go home in the morning, we leave off and adjust yourself as if you just came to church and slept in order for two years. So, if you really want to excel, you want to do things for the kingdom of God, you want to be different, you want to be exceptional, you must expose yourself to training. And training is every and every, every, everything. And not just being trained alone, we really need to accept the training. Because sometimes you come for the training, but the Lord hits you, boom, boom, boom. You say, don't do it again. But stay here and go through the process. Because when you're through, when circumstances move you out of that space, by default, the things that you've learned through the trip will start coming out on their own. And I was saying, this boy is humble. You can watch it humble. What did I do different? Because it's coming out naturally. You can see that he is very, very humble. You know, and mom is so amazing. And see my boss. To get some song, trust is not means. And trust. But anytime I see my boss respond to things, I say, me, I'm still learning humility again. He told me one day some I said, I was laughing. I said, it's possible. And but his faith has pulled you through. So anything and everything is possible. My boss already said it. Listening to the Spirit of God inside of you, and after the Spirit of God, go through the process and then do all the training. And when you're through, everybody will shine and run definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Daddy, um, so I have, know that I have um, a few things that I've been struggling with over the years to achieve, I would say. And um, there's some that it seems like it's not really working over time. So in that kind of situation, there's a, so I, I have this in like a part of my life or for certain things I'm trying to pursue. But some people, it's their story. It's their old story. It's like they've been chasing something. This is my dream. This is my all. This is what I want to live for. It's like they've been chasing it, and it's not working. And particularly musicians here, you say you want to do music. <laughs> the first thing your parents will tell you, your parents' reaction at the start will not... No, you won't enjoy it. No, 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 no. It's, it's like... You're saying, mommy, I want to do music. What they're hearing is, mommy, I want to waste my life. That, practically, practically. So, how, how do we really stay trusting God in that state? Why it seems like it's not working? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Samson. Thank you, Temple Nation. Praise the Lord Jesus. Uh, I think that one of the, one of the evils, okay, in this world today uh, from the society is to play down on the God factor. You see? And education, okay, is also helping that. Because many times, the degrees that we got from the university, many times, okay, is actually against faith in God. So, like I said, most, like I said most of the time, that civilization awful time robs us of evangelization. Now, this is Aspire Concert, for instance, and we are talking about aspiration. But you see, when our aspiration meets inspiration, you see that, that is only possible because of the spirit within. You know, like they were saying, possibility is inevitable. Now, I have learned over time, you know, you know my stories and, and all of those things. 
I am where I am today, like he said, following that inner witness of the Spirit. It does not fail. It's a good idea does not necessarily mean God idea. Good idea may work, but God idea will always work. You can always bank on it. Years ago, for instance, you know, you, you know how I came to the faith from Islam, from, from visions of Jesus. So when I came to the faith, and then this fire, you know, was everywhere, you know, and all of that, you know, and then I started holding crusades, you know, miracle meetings and all of that. Then I, I now wanted to have bosses. And I'm talking about GS2, you know. <laughs> and I wanted to have bosses so that I could, you know, convey my uh, crusade equipment, you know, make, you know, the evangelism easy and all of that. And then, how would I get bosses? I said, GSS 2. Hallelujah to God. So, as I was, you know, praying, you know, Denmark 11, 24, you know, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So I just stayed on the word, then I prayed and all of that. And then to exercise my faith, to show that I believe, okay, I wrote it on the wall. I said, this day, so and so and so, I received these buses, so and so and so, for, and all of that. And then I left. And then my, one of my brothers, my younger brother, came to the place and saw it and laughed. Took it to the family and they laughed, you know. And they were like, ah. He actually wants to have bosses, you know. So my brother went there and, and added plus bus conductors, you know. <laughs> just, just making mockery, you know, of the whole stuff. So when I came in and they were all laughing and all of that, you know, they were mocking me. I went back to the place and then I was praying. And then I heard the voice of God so clear. And what I'm about to tell you now, it may take time, you know, for you to come to term with it. But if you do, or if everybody here, if you do, you will never, you will never aspire for anything that you won't get. And I'm not even talking about money. Hear this. And then I heard the Lord say to me clearly, he said, son, the cost of a thing is no money. He said, we have been trained to think that it is all about money. I don't know if you know what I'm saying now. Uh, Samsung, for instance, Okay, I perceive in my spirit there's something that has to do with property and that there's something that has to do with, you know, completing money to get it. But by this encounter now, he would see that from this concert it is done. You, you see, you see, because aspiration is meeting inspiration. And when that happens, miracle is better. So the first thing is, he said, the cost of a thing is no money. We have been trained to think that way. So you think that because I don't have the money, you, we are here now. As by a concert is holding now. But you didn't have the money when you had the idea. But it is here. So the cost of a thing is not money. He said, we must allow the word of God to educate our mind. That is, it is the word that has given us that whatever, that it is money. What does God want from you? God wants you to depend on him. God does not want an independent child. You see, the more, the more you have to depend on God, the more you are growing spiritually. You see, it is actually the more faith that you show in God that actually determines your spiritual growth. So he said, the cost of a thing is not money. He said, it is asking me. And then believe that you receive. And you shall have it. Is that what he said in Mark 11, 24? Was he joking? No, no, no. Was he joking? He said, he said verily, Verily, I say unto you. Now, when Jesus, who is the truth, is now saying, Truly, truly, I the truth, he's telling you the truth. Then you know that he's already swearing. He's trying to tell you that you may not, you may not believe everything that I have said before. But this one, believe it. Whatever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall love it. There is no money there yet. So, when we allow the word of God to educate us, you understand, you will, you will have that inspiration for your aspiration. And because that inspiration is better by the spirit within, you will have a staying power. I'm telling you, you will have what? A staying power. I came here from NYC. Came to serve in Delta State. And while we are at Usain Luku, what do they call that place? Where we had our camp. I was, we were queuing for our first Alawi. And then, to cut a long story short, you know, a lady came and said, excuse me, I'm in front of you. I said, no problem. 
Another one came and said, I'm behind her, I'm behind her, I'm behind her. A lot of them were coming and then they pushed me, you know, to the sun. And I was angry. And I remember the man of God was not, you know, let, not let the sun go down because the sun was already up. So I decided <laughs> that this sun must not go down. So right there, you see that, why in that state that I was, I was embittered, I just lifted up my eyes and everything disappeared. The whole camp disappeared and there was Jesus. And then he said, when you are through with service, go to worry and start to work. That's why I came here with shirt and trouser. I came with that word. With that word. This property that we are, we are here now, I was doing prayer work. And I was doing prayer work along this street. When I came to this place, something stopped me. And then the tongues became intense. You know, as I prayed, looking at this place, the Lord told me, this is yours. It is ours today. I was spotting, you know, when I came, I, I lived with several people. You see that? But because I came by inspiration, I had this staying power. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Because, see, he will make good his word. I'm telling you. He will make good his word. So that staying power comes from inspiration. Because you, you know whom you believe. You see that? You know that if he has said it, he will do it. Yes. If he has spoken it, he will make it good. You know something else? So that staying power, you are, you, are, you are here now. You see that now? A part of that inspiration. You are here now. And from here, we've been able to start 17 other centers within this country and outside of this country with that single inspiration. So the first thing is asserting your inspiration. You understand? And let it come from the spirit within so when your inspiration meets your aspiration and then that will give you a staying power that faith will bet it I think that should suffice Amazing. wow wow I trust we're learning musicians are you learning musicians are you learning everyone are we learning awesome so I would ask a last question because of time. Hmm? That's why next time you hear of Dinosaur doing something, please support. Right? Please support. Yeah. So see, thank God, Temple is family. Daddy, Daddy has joined the family since, since by himself. And I believe Samsung is part of our family now. <laughs> so, so I have a question for you. Since I was a kid till now, you've been relevant. Mm. Sir, please don't just tell us the spirit. <laughs> no, you try your best. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I need, I need, I need some details. I need some details, sir. Okay, you mean I should be practical? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, two things basically. The two things that's kept me still standing and still very relevant in the gospel music ministry and those two things will keep me will keep the relevance up until the rapture hallelujah first it's important to stay connected to your source hallelujah stay connected to your source as i was growing up as a gospel music artist I saw, two, I saw something on TV, national TV, and I learned from there. A gospel artist, two gospel artists, at different times, at two different national television in Nigeria, were asked. So as a gospel artist, they were asked, it was on, in, a, in an interview, and they were asked, as a gospel artist, what, and then when the guy was answering, he said, uh, first of all, let me clear this. I am not... Don't call me a gospel artist. He said, I prefer that you call me an artist. Remove the gospel in front. I'd rather be called an artist. And I was watching, I said, wow. And we all know if I, call, if I sing the song, you know the songs. And then at another occasion, I was watching another interview. This was a lady, a gospel artist with some hit songs that you all know, said it. The same thing that, you know, I'd rather not be referred to as a gospel artist. I'd rather be called an artist. I felt that was a big error. I felt it was a big error because first of all, first of all, 
what has brought you to the limelight is the gospel. What has made you popular is the gospel. And I felt that was an outright denouncement of the grace that has brought you. And I felt with that single word, you can frustrate the grace of God upon your life. And I learned from there and I said, that was where I, I started writing on my, on my, as a title, The Church Boy. I said, I will not be amongst those that would say, I'm not going to be called a gospel artist. So I put an identity to my name. So today everybody calls me The Church Boy, boy Samson. Because I want you to know exactly where I'm coming from. So it's important to stay connected to your source. I don't want to go into all that, but yeah. that's number one. Stay yeah. connected to yourself. Secondly, service. Mm. Service. Service in the house of God. Service. Hallelujah. As much as you're relevant out there singing everywhere, it's Hallelujah. important for your, for your impact Hallelujah. to be felt in your church. Hallelujah. Temple Nation is, um, is, uh, is, in my, is in the same way, the same ministry. The same church, the same, the same church. I am still the music director in my church today. He has played drums for me several times. Wow. <laughs> I still lead worship. That's, I still, they just call me, ah, oh, Samsung. And when I say they, I don't mean pastor. I mean, no more choir members. Uh, Samsung, please lead worship for us. And I pick up the mic and I lead I worship. In a place of service. Praise the Lord. I am a cell leader in my church. Temple Nation is a member of my cell. We hold meetings in my office every Tuesday, 5 to 6. I still go downstairs to evangelize. I tell people about Jesus. They see me and they're like, oh, Samson, oh, Samson. And I tell them, how are you doing? I believe that God has given us this popularity to expand the work of God. Yes, I believe very much. I started seeing, when the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew, shall renew their strength. I started seeing it in a different light. You know, when we hear they that wait upon the Lord, most of the time we think it's, about, it's all about fasting and praying. Yeah. Having uh, um, all night yeah. and all that. Yeah. No. In another vein, I started seeing it differently. The when the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, it's saying, in a place of service. Yeah. In a place of service. What does a waiter, if you go into a Hallelujah. restaurant, what Hallelujah. does a waiter do? He Hallelujah. waits on you. Hallelujah. And when a waiter is waiting on you, what do you do? He calls for your attention. If, do you guys understand what I'm trying yeah. to say? Yeah. You walk into a restaurant and sit down. A waiter comes and stands by your side. Will you, can you actually just ignore the waiter? No. You want to ask, okay. You want to start, you know, telling the waiter what you want, right? The same thing. They that wait on, on the Lord. The Lord. Hallelujah. As you are waiting on God, you are calling for his attention. Hallelujah. He will not ignore you. Hallelujah. So when other people are busy doing the things they are doing, you are waiting Hallelujah. on God in a place of service. Hallelujah. In a place of service. Those are the two things that kept me still relevant <laughs> till today. And you know the truth is, I've not even started. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm still rehearsing. Hallelujah. I've not even started. Hallelujah. So for every gospel artist here that's sparring, those that are Hallelujah. already out there, you know, two things. Don't forget it. First, stay connected to your source. It's very important. Secondly, you must do service, especially in the house of God. It's very important. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Was Thank I practical you. enough? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are. Wow, wow, wow. wow. So, uh, I don't know how to close this, but there's a lot of things I would want to ask. There's a lot of things I would want to share. There's a lot of things I would want us to discuss. There's a lot of things I would want us to look into. But we trust God for more time. We trust God for more time. Uh, we have come to the end of this session. <laughs> So thank you very much, sir. Thank you very, very much.